welcome back to the journey to the far lands <laughs> all right well let's see here oh boy got a bunch of stuff to get rid of as usual okay let's get out of here let's make okay there's somebody burning over there and let's just okay good he's already gone excellent all right go ahead and plug this up and I want to dispose of some excess garbage. And I don't know why I'm carrying that leather. I don't need it. Okay. All right. There we go. Now. And that way. Westward. Onward. To the far lands. <laughs> All right. Here we are. As we start the 138th episode of the Journey to the Far Lands, this is the morning of the 421st Minecraft day since leaving spawn. And, yeah, it's turning out to be a pretty good day, I think, overall. Of course, it's early yet, so there's no telling for sure. Ugh. Well, at least I am getting around it, mostly. Yeah, okay. Uh, oops. Let's try this way. There we go. Chicken, it's your fault that I got turned around. Or maybe it's your fault. And you know what? Oh, actually, I'm kind of low on arrows. All right, I'll just uh, grab the feathers and maybe pay attention to grabbing some, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, uh, gravel to farm up some more flint. I didn't realize I was so low on arrows. Okay. I, well, maybe I did notice I was low on arrows, but... I, I'm so used to modern Minecraft with enchantment, enchanted bows and such that, uh, you know, uh, my bows in the modern versions have all got uh, infinity on them. So I only ever need to carry one arrow. Although, honestly, I think the infinity enchantment really should have been such that you actually don't need an arrow in your inventory. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be, have infinity, you might as well have infinity from nothing. It makes sense to me, as much as anything makes sense. Anyway, oops, uh, let's see. My text file that I keep open while recording was covered up. And doing that lets me click off of uh, Minecraft without actually pausing the recording. Anyway, uh... The size of the world, yes. 5,064.29 megabytes as of this episode's beginning. And we're getting up there. Doing a pretty good job here of moving things along. And let's see. I don't need wool. I could stand some logs probably. <coughs> oh, excuse me, that one caught me by surprise, as I usually try to mute those out, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I need to keep an eye out for some gravel, believe it or not, and actually shovel up some gravel so that I can get some flint to use with the feathers and some sticks to make fresh arrows. Or at least get myself up to a full stack. I don't really see a point carrying more than a stack because I don't really use them that much. It's just general principles. If you're going to carry one, you might as well carry a stack. And that applies to just about anything you carry in Minecraft. If you're going to carry one, you might as well carry a stack. Because you've already devoted an inventory slot to it. You might as well carry as much as you can. 
Ah, gravel. So much easier to find on the surface in this version. And the reason for gravel, of course, is not that I actually need the gravel, it's just that in shoveling it up, some of it yields bits of flint. Whoa! Holy 404! Yeah! Chicken? It's your fault. He set that up. He set that up ahead of time. He knew I was coming. And so he spent, I don't know how long, working ahead of time, digging the whole area out from under and arranging for this gravel to be floating so that when I dug the wrong block, that uh, it would collapse out from under me. That's five flint. I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm just going to get moving. But uh, I'll probably have to dig up some more of that gravel. And Of course, the gravel that I've got, I can always put it down and pick it back up. Well, put it down and dig it back up. Let's use the right words here. And I think one stack of it will be more than enough. Okay, anyway. Moving onwards, uh, here's a uh, seasonal kind of question for you, since this is the middle of December, and I'm sure most people are thinking about, if not outright, planning these things now. I know I'm thinking about it, and even a little bit of planning is uh, Christmas dinner. What are you going to do for Christmas dinner? What is your plans for Christmas dinner? Do you have a traditional kind of meal? Or uh, do you just have whatever and gather friends and family together and all that? Or do you just uh, kick back, have a couple of cheeseburgers and watch a, uh, watch a movie or a video or whatever? Or the game or what, whatever it is that you watch or do for Christmas, you know? Uh, I'm just curious. I sort of kind of have a little bit of a tradition myself, and that is that uh, as close to Christmas Day as I can get without going past it, I get a pizza. Because it is something that I so seldom get these days. Used to be I would get pizza every single time I could possibly afford it. But in the name of weight loss and carbohydrate control and all sorts of things and eating better and healthier and so on and all that, I've changed that. And for the last several years, oops, I only very, very, very seldom get pizza. And, uh, well, like, for example, this time around, I honestly don't know for sure how many months it has been since I went out and got pizza. I honestly couldn't begin to tell you how many months it has been. But I know for certain that it's been three months at least, probably four or five and it's very likely that the last time I got pizza was on my birthday. Because that's the other time of the year that I get pizza. Yo, chicken! Nothing to see here. Nothing happened. Nothing at all. And, uh... Yeah, that, that's another one of my traditions, is that on my birthday I get pizza. And I get it again on Christmas. And uh, I know that this kind of 
in one in a very real sense it kind of blows a hole a gaping hole in uh, weight loss efforts I don't care I mean I care very much about my weight loss efforts and I'm really not trying to sabotage myself it's just simply that this is a thing it's one of those things that is kind of important ish sort of kind of thing that uh, it's one of those things that you don't want to give up simply because most of the time you're working on losing weight or being healthier or just plain eating better or saving money or what have you but once in a while and by once in a while i mean very seldom you need a little something you need to give yourself a treat it's i, I honestly do believe it's important uh and I'm not talking about the uh, so-called cheat day that I've heard a lot of people talking about building into their diets. Like they say, every seven days you get a day off from the diet and you can cheat and eat anything you want. It's a cheat day. Uh, that's, no. That, to do something like that every seven days is to say, why bother doing the diet? other than to say, I'm doing the diet. Because it's not going to work if you cheat day every seven days. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. Um, yeah, so, Christmas pizza. Absolutely. Because it's, you know, it, it, it's great. And not only that, but somebody else makes it. Now, sometime in the last couple of years, I did cook a turkey for Thanksgiving. Uh, that was good. I, I hadn't actually done that before. You know, <laughs> strangely enough, you know, I've cooked a lot of things over the years, but I've never, I had never actually cooked a bird. And, you know, that was cool. Especially because, you know, you get the opportunity. You can pretend it's a Minecraft chicken and you're putting it in there alive. Okay, maybe that's too much, but you know, what can I say? I don't like Minecraft chickens. <laughs> I have had a beef with them going way back to the beginning. Anyway... Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I derailed myself something awful there. But, yeah, I'm just curious uh, what folks are doing for holiday dinners. Whether you celebrate Christmas or not, it is a holiday season. And even if you don't celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever other holiday it is, you could celebrate the fact that most people are going to have the day off. So you could celebrate having the day off. You know, even if you don't celebrate the holiday itself, you could celebrate the day off. That's pretty much always kind of worth celebrating, isn't it? I thought so. Yeah. Oh, now you materialize. You couldn't do that before I got in the boat. Oh, well, whatever makes no difference anyway yeah so uh let me know what what are you doing for christmas for, for the holiday dinner the big holiday dinner that is a big deal because it's one of those beautifully handy excuses that we managed to come up with to eat all of those things that we love to eat that we know doggone well we shouldn't eat a whole lot of very often because 
it will turn us into uh, various forms of spheres and sphere-like things with legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about what it would do. But anyway, yeah, let me know what you do there because uh, that that's interesting. Uh, I have had an interesting time in some other regard. Now, as you may recall, recently I lost the ability to use my second monitor because the, uh, the onboard graphics solution on my motherboard stopped working. And that's what was driving the second monitor. Now, I would have had the monitor plugged into a second VGA port on my video card except for some reason this video card a gtx 660 ti only has one vga port and uh, so obviously that goes for the main monitor and uh, it leaves no place else to connect a secondary monitor and so the secondary monitor was I figured okay fine the motherboard has onboard VGA graphics I will use that for the second monitor and after a little bit of dancing around and locating the appropriate driver for it it worked and it worked for I don't know what a couple of years now something like that and then one day there was a power failure actually there was three or four of them in the space of about 20 minutes and when i finally got the system back up and running that graphic solution didn't work anymore which is why i'm looking at the idea of replacing the motherboard of course in order to do that i have to find i, I want to find an exact new or refurbished version of uh, the same motherboard that's already in here and the reason for that is that instead of just buying a newer better etc etc is that i have had experience in the past with windows having something of a hissy fit when you change too much of the computer hardware it decides it's not running on the same computer anymore and therefore has a royal hissy fit and all of a sudden you are fighting with Microsoft about the legitimacy of your copy of Windows. Even though you paid $139 or whatever it was for a OEM CD or DVD or whatever so that you could OEM your own computer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm really going to have to stop talking about that or I'll go into another huge long rant and sidetrack myself off the conversation uh so anyway you know i would have to do that and either a new or refurbished version of the uh msi z85 g45 gaming motherboard because if i i figure if i put the same Put a brand new or fully refurbished copy of the same make and model in there windows shouldn't have quite so much of a hissy fit about hardware changes at least that is my hope and uh, until then i was still trying to figure out ways that i could get access to use the second monitor again because, let's face it, once you get used to having a secondary monitor, you don't ever want to go back to not having a secondary monitor. You just don't. Let's see. Hey, how, let's make some more arrows. At least that many. Still have to kill a few more chickens. And, and then i got to process some of that gravel.
into Flint, but I'll get there. But oh, wait a minute. How about I make torches with the rest of it? There. Alrighty. Well, moving onwards. Um, so, I was looking at options and possibilities and trying to find a way to get back to using the second monitor. And I kept coming back to the graphics card, the GTX 660 Ti. And one of the things I've noticed about it many times is that uh, one of the things it has, one of its features, is that in addition to the standard legacy VG, uh, VGA port, it also has a uh, HDMI port. Now, of course, my first thought is, okay, that's a whole lot of no help because I don't have any devices that can accept input from a VG from a uh, HDMI port. I have no HDMI devices at all. And then, of course, finally, the thought dawned on me. What about a converter slash adapter? You know, basically a little box that on one end of it, there's a cord coming out that plugs into an HDMI port on a graphics card. And the other end of it, on the box itself, there is a port that would accept a VGA connection from a monitor. And it would convert the signal as appropriate, as needed, so that the HDMI port could be used to drive a VGA monitor. It makes totally perfect sense. I got to looking around, and it turns out that such devices do exist. I found one. As a matter of fact, the very first search result I got was on Walmart.com. And I know, people are going to roll their eyes and say, oh, Walmart, yeah, yippee. Well, okay, you're probably right. In fact, I know you're right. But, I figured, what the heck. This was a nice, inexpensive cable with a little box on it that does exactly what I just described in terms of making it possible for an HDMI port to drive a VGA device. And not only that, but it could be had for the low, low price of about five and a half dollars. Specifically, five dollars and eighty-five cents is the cost to me after ordering and, in, and they include whatever taxes and fees and so on and so forth. So, I ordered the thing. And I used their, the Walmart site to store option where they ship it to my local Walmart and I go in there and pick it up for free. So it makes the shipping not cost me anything. And the first thing I have to say is that I have used that site to store shipping option many times over the last 10 or 12 years or however long it's been. And every single time it's worked out the same way. I place the order. It gets shipped, and I use the tracking facility to track the order. I'm one of those people, when they get me tracking, when, when I have the ability to track a shipment, I do it. 
and I check the tracking probably two and three or four times a day. It's just one of those things. I can't leave it alone. I have to. When they give me that ability, any shipping thing, any shipper gives me a tracking number, I use it. And I track the shipment. And I watch the thing. And I watch its progress from wherever it starts to starts at to finally arriving at me. You know, I, I can't leave that alone. I have to keep looking at it and so on and refreshing it. And it's totally uneventful and totally, yeah, okay, it went here and then it went there, then it went here and, you know, it can, it, it goes typically most things coming to where I live. They will go to Memphis, Tennessee, and then a lot of times uh, from Memphis, they will go to Little Rock, and then from there, they will come up the highway from Little Rock through Batesville, and then finally get into my area. Yeah. And so I was watching the tracking on this thing. I ordered this thing on December the 1st. I have to specify that. I have to clarify that. I did actually order this thing on the 1st of December. And the transaction cleared my bank on the 2nd of December. And I was watching the tracking, looking at it a couple of times, a couple, three times a day, you know. I mean, I not like I'm sitting there refreshing the page every two minutes or something like that. I'm not that obsessive about it. I, don't, I hope nobody is. <laughs> but then again, so I'm watching this, and when you place the order, they give you an estimate, and it said right there, arrives December 7-8. So the 7th to the 8th, I was supposed to get the thing. Now, my previous experience with Site to Store, Every single time I have used it over the last 10 years or so, it has arrived on the date that they said it would. Every single time. Always works out. It arrives on time, every time. And in perfectly good condition and so on. Well, let's just say the record is no longer spotless. Because once again, I'm watching the tracking, and on Thursday, the 7th of December, I looked at the tracking that night and noticed that the tracking had updated again and that at 8.48 p.m. on Thursday, the 7th of December, this item that I had ordered had made its way from someplace in California to Memphis, Tennessee. Because there was an arrival scan, and then at 8.48 p.m. there was an unload scan. Which means whatever truck or shipping or whatever that had gotten it there had been unloaded. And I thought to myself, okay, great. That means this thing will be in the store on Friday. Then You know, it'll be in the store tomorrow. And I could go pick this thing up and have it in time for the weekend live stream so that I can once again use my second monitor and uh, not be, well, sort of streaming crippled. Because streaming without a second monitor feels crippled. It, it really does, especially after you're used to having that second monitor. And anyway, Friday comes along. I'm watching the tracking. I'm hoping to see that it has arrived in the local store sometime Friday morning so that I can get out there Friday afternoon and get it and get home. 
of course, you know, and it's, I can't just go out Friday evening because, you know, my car, the headlights, garbage, no driving at night for me at all. In fact, I've had a hard and fast rule for the last five years or so. I make it a point. My rule is I am home before sunset. I give myself, I have to have time to go out, do what I'm going to do, and get home before sunset, or I don't go anywhere. It's that simple. And the reason for that is very simple. I don't want a ticket. I don't want to get a ticket for driving with uh, bad headlights, and I guarantee you, you can get that. I have very narrowly avoided it in the past. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I don't want to get a ticket for that and so on. I, I can't afford to pay something like that, so I do my, that's the reason I've got this hard rule about not driving past sunset at all. And so, because of that, I am, I'm kind of watching the website big time. And really, really, really wanting to see that, uh, oh, come on. I'm just going to dig in here that this thing has arrived so that I can get down there warm uh, that afternoon because if it doesn't get there by about 3.30 or so, I don't have time to get there and get back before sunset. And it was starting to get late, so I decided, okay, I'm going to just call the local Walmart and see if the people there know about whether or not it's going to be on the shipment and so on and so forth. I called them. No, they don't know. And so, well, the long and the short of it is, it didn't show up Friday. I figured, okay, I will wait until Monday. Nope. Monday I called him again. And, well, I had to, I, I, I pardon me, I can't seem to talk and make beds at the same time. That's so sad and pathetic it isn't funny, but it's true. So, I called them, and they didn't have a clue. Not the first clue about where it went. I got a clue a few days later when the tracking finally updated again. It was in California. It was in Vernon, California. So, I ended up calling the, the site to store people and talking to them about it and they finally get it straightened around and they end up canceling that old order they create a new order and basically reship it to me and now it's supposed to be here by the 20th of December and last night I was looking at the tracking for it and there was an entry you'd never want to see on shipping tracking And it was yesterday's date, uh, I forget what time it was, but the status entry on the line said, exception. Exceptions are always bad in shipping tracking. So now I'm wondering if I'm going to get this thing at all, and if I'm going to get it, what condition is it going to be in? <laughs> Isn't that just beautiful? Yeah, in any event, I am talking myself way over time so <laughs> i think it's way past time for me to shut up and say that uh, 
Don't forget to stop by tinfoilshop.com. Donate to Child's Play Charity. Definitely a worthy cause. Very much worth your support. And so, thanks for watching. Take it easy. I am out of here.